Thank you for joining us as we explore the five Dhyani Buddhas and how to use their meditative expressions to clear away negativity from your world and propel your consciousness into higher dimensions. I will be giving you a description of each Buddha, including the meaning of his name and location on the mandala, his color and element, kanda, his symbol, throne bearer, his wisdom, the poison that is antidoted by his wisdom, his mudra and bicha, which is his seed syllable that is used in their mantra. We will also be giving their mantras as we focus our attention on each Buddha with a beautiful animated visualization. Visualizing yourself one with each Buddha as you hold their mudra can greatly amplify the action of the mantra, raising you to higher dimensions of being as the poisons threatening your spiritual progress are replaced by the Buddha's transcendent powers. It's very beneficial to practice visualization whenever you meditate and use the spoken word in mantras such as these because it engages your third eye, which is the door through which what is spiritual becomes physical. Once you remember each Dhyani Buddha and their attributes, you can use their mantras and visualizations to augment whatever meditation practices you are currently engaged in. All the content for this presentation comes from the Summit Lighthouse, a unique worldwide non-denominational religious and philosophical organization that for almost 70 years has published hundreds of books, audios and videos on every spiritual topic in 30 languages. We have study groups and teaching centers in major cities around the world where students study and practice the ancient truths and mystical teachings found in all religions. I also wanted to mention that many of the concepts we will be discussing come from Tibetan Buddhist sources such as the secret doctrines of the Tibetan Books of the Dead, foundations of Tibetan mysticism and others. For a complete list of resources and other helpful links, please see the notes. So to begin, who are the five Dhyani Buddhas and where did they come from? The five Dhyani Buddhas are Vairoshana, Akshobhya, Ratnasambhava, Amitabha and Amagasiddhi. Tibetan Buddhists believe that the Adi Buddha the primordial and highest being, created the Dhyani Buddhas by his meditative powers. The five Dhyani Buddhas are celestial Buddhas visualized during meditation. The word Dhyani is derived from the Sanskrit Dhyana, meaning meditation. The Dhyani Buddhas are also called Jinas, which means victors or conquerors, and are considered to be great healers of the mind and soul. They are not historical figures like Gautama Buddha, but transcendent beings who symbolize universal divine principles or forces. They represent various aspects of the enlightened consciousness and are guides to spiritual transformation. Each Dhyani Buddha is associated with certain attributes and symbols. Each one embodies one of the five wisdoms, which antidote the five deadly poisons that are of ultimate danger to man's spiritual progress and keep him tied to worldly existence. Buddhists teach that the Dhyani Buddhas are able to transmute the five poisons into their transcendent wisdoms. The Tibetan Book of the Dead recommends that the devotee meditate on the Dhyani Buddhas so that their wisdoms will replace the negative forces he has allowed to take hold within. Each Buddha rules over one of the directions of space and one of the cosmic realms of ether, water, earth, fire and air. The Dhyani Buddhas also personify the five Khandas, components that make up cosmic existence as well as human personality. These components are consciousness, form, feeling, perception, and volition. In addition, each Dhyani Buddha is associated with a specific color, mudra, hand gesture, symbolic animal that supports his throne, sacred symbol, and bija, seed syllable. The bija represents the essence of the Dhyani Buddha. It can be used along with the sacred syllable, om, and the Buddha's name to create a mantra, a series of mystic syllables that have an esoteric meaning. In Hinduism and Buddhism, disciples recite mantras to evoke the power and presence of a divine being. In some traditions, devotees use mantras in meditation to help them become one with the deity they are invoking. By repeating the mantra and assuming the mudra of any Buddha, writes Buddhist monk and teacher Sangharakshita, one can not only place oneself in correspondence or alignment with the particular order of reality which he personifies but also be infused with its transcendental power. Buddhists often depict the Dhyani Buddhas in a mandala. Mandala is a Sanskrit word meaning circle, translated in Tibetan texts as center or 
what surrounds. Some say the word derives from manda, meaning essence. The mandala as a circle denotes wholeness, completeness, and the perfection of Buddhahood. The mandala is also a circle of friends, a gathering of Buddhas. Traditionally, mandalas are painted on tonkas, scroll paintings framed in silk, drawn with colored sand, represented by heaps of rice, or constructed three-dimensionally, often in cast metal. A Dhyani Buddha is positioned in the center, as well as on each of the cardinal points of the mandala. A mandala is a sacred, consecrated space where no obstacles, impurities, or distracting influences exist. Buddhists use mandalas to aid them in meditation and visualization. All mandalas, writes Tibetologist Detlef Lauf, originate from the seed syllables or bija mantras of the deities. During meditation upon these mantras, an elemental radiance of light develops, from which comes the image of the Buddhas. The whole external mandala is a model of that spiritual pattern which the meditating individual sees within himself and which he must endeavor to experience in his own consciousness. So let's learn about each of these celestial Buddhas and give their mantras. The first Dhyani Buddha is Vairoshna, which means he who is like the sun or the radiating one. Vairoshna represents either the integration of or the origin of the Dhyani Buddhas. His wisdom is the wisdom of the Dharmadhatu. The Dharmadhatu is the realm of truth in which all things exist as they really are. Vairochana's wisdom is also referred to as the all-pervading wisdom of the Dharmakaya, the body of the law or the absolute Buddha nature. It also represents the causal body around the I am presence in the chart of your divine self. Vairochna's transcendent wisdom reveals the realm of highest reality and overcomes the poison of ignorance or delusion. His wisdom is considered to be the origin of or the total of all the wisdoms of the Dhyani Buddhas. Vairochna is usually located in the center of mandalas of the Dhyani Buddhas. According to some texts, he is positioned in the east. His color is white or blue, symbolizing a pure consciousness. He rules over the element of ether and embodies the kanda of consciousness. In some systems, he is associated with the kanda of form. His symbol is the Dharma Chakra, the wheel of the teaching or the wheel of the law. It denotes the teaching of the Buddha. Its eight spokes represent the noble eightfold path, which Gaudama revealed in his first sermon after his enlightenment. Vairochna's lotus throne is supported by the lion, symbol of courage, boldness, and an eager advancing spirit. His mudra is the Dharma Chakra mudra, the gesture of turning the wheel of the teaching. Because he embodies the wisdom of all Buddhas, Vairochna's bisha is the universal sound Om. His mantra is Om Vairochna Om. Let's give it together. The second Dhyani Buddha is Akshobhya, which means immovable or unshakable. Akshobhya's mirror-like wisdom reflects all things calmly and uncritically and reveals their true nature. One text says, just as one sees one's own reflection in a mirror, so the Dharmakaya is seen in the mirror of wisdom. The mirror-like wisdom antidotes the poison of hatred and anger. In the mandala of the five Dhyani Buddhas, Akshobhya is usually positioned in the east, at the bottom, but he is sometimes placed in the center. 
His color is blue. He rules over the element of water and personifies the kanda of form. In some systems, he is associated with the kanda of consciousness. Akshobhya's lotus throne is supported by the elephant, symbol of steadfastness and strength. His symbol is the Vajra, also called thunderbolt or diamond scepter. The Vajra denotes enlightenment, the indestructible adamantine nature of pure consciousness, or the essence of reality. In some traditions, the Vajra signifies the union of man and the Buddha. One end of the Vajra symbolizes the macrocosmic realm of the Buddha, and the other end the microcosmic realm of man. Akshobhya's mudra is formed by his right hand and is the Bhumisparsha mudra, the earth-touching gesture. It denotes unshakability. This is the mudra Gautama Buddha used to summon the earth to witness to his right to attain enlightenment when he was challenged by Mara, the evil one. Akshobhya's paradise is Abharati, the land of exceeding great delight. Buddhists believe that whoever is reborn there cannot fall back to a lower level of consciousness. Akshobhya's bija is hum, and his mantra is Om Akshobhya Hum. Let's give his mantra. The next Dhyani Buddha is Ratnasambhava, and his name means the jewel-born one or origin of jewels. The jewels are the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. The Buddha is the enlightened one, the guru, the hub of the wheel of the law. The Dharma is the teaching or the law. The Sangha is the community. Ratnasambhava transmutes the poison of pride, spiritual, intellectual, and human pride into the wisdom of equality. Tibetan Buddhists teach that with the wisdom of equality, one sees all things with divine impartiality and recognizes the divine equality of all beings. One sees all beings and the Buddha as having the same nature. Ratnasambhava is the Dhyani Buddha of the south. His color is yellow, the color of the sun in its zenith. Ratnasambhava rules over the element of earth and embodies the kanda of feeling or sensation. He is sometimes shown holding his symbol, the Ratna, jewel, or Chintamani, wish-fulfilling jewel that grants all right desires. The Chintamani is a symbol of the liberated mind. Ratnasambhava's throne is upheld by a horse, denoting impetus and liberation. His mudra is the Varada mudra. It is the gesture of giving or charity, which portrays him offering compassion and protection to his disciples. His bija is tram, and his mantra is Om Ratnasambhava tram. Here is his mantra.
The fourth Dhyani Buddha is Amitabha, which means infinite light. Amitabha's discriminating wisdom conquers the poison of the passions, all cravings, covetousness, greed, and lust. With this wisdom, the disciple discerns all beings separately, yet knows every being as an individual expression of the One. In the mandala of the Dhyani Buddhas, Amitabha is positioned to the west. His color is rose, red, the color of the setting sun. He rules over the element of fire and personifies the candor of perception. Thus, the eye and the faculty of seeing are associated with Amitabha. The peacock with eyes on its plumes is his throne bearer. The peacock symbolizes grace. Amitabha's symbol is the Padma or Lotus. In Buddhism, the Lotus can symbolize many things, including spiritual unfoldment, purity, the true nature of beings realized through enlightenment and compassion, the purified form of passion. Some consider Amitabha to be synonymous with Amitayus, the Buddha of infinite life. Others honor Amitayus as a form of Amitabha or as a separate Buddha. Amitayus is usually depicted holding a vessel of the elixir of immortal life. A tiny Ashoka tree often sprouts from the cover of his vessel, representing the union of the spiritual and the material. Devotees aspire to be reborn in Amitabha's western paradise, known as Sukhavati, where conditions are ideal for attaining enlightenment. His mudra is the dhyana, meditation mudra. His bija is hri, and his mantra is om amitabha hri. Let's give it together. The fifth Dhyani Buddha is Amagasiddhi, and his name means Almighty Conqueror, or he who unerringly achieves his goal. Amagasiddhi's all-accomplishing wisdom, or wisdom of perfected action, antidotes the poison of envy and jealousy. This wisdom confers perseverance, infallible judgment, and unerring action. Amagasiddhi represents the practical realization of the wisdoms of the other Dhyani Buddhas. He is described as the Dhyani Buddha of the realization of the Bodhisattva path, a bodhisattva is one who has forgone the bliss of nirvana with a vow to first liberate all beings. Amagasiddhi is the Dhyani Buddha of the north. His color is green, signifying the sun at midnight. He rules over the element of air and embodies the candor of volition, also called the candor of mental phenomena or tendencies of mind. His symbol is the Vishvavajra or double Vajra. It is made of two crossed Vajras and symbolizes the highest comprehension of truth and the spiritual power of a Buddha. The throne of Amagasiddhi is supported by Garudas, mythical figures, half man and half bird. In relation to Amagasiddhi, Lama Govinda says the Garuda symbolizes man in transition towards a new dimension of consciousness, the transition from the human to the superhuman state, which takes place in the mysterious darkness of the night, invisible to the eye. Amagasiddhi's mudra is the Abhaya mudra, it is the gesture of fearlessness and protection. The right hand is raised to shoulder height with palm forward. The left hand is cupped in the lap or placed at the heart, fingers pointing inward. Amogasiddhi's bisha is A, ah, and his mantra is Om Amogasiddhi A. Ah. Here is his mantra.
Thank you for watching this presentation. I hope you learned something useful that will help clear the way for greater self-enlightenment. Be sure to check out our notes for resources and more information about the five Dhyani Buddhas and Ascended Master's teachings by the Summit Lighthouse.